Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign playing as that beautiful United States of America in the New Order Last Days of Europe. Now normally, I show you like me selecting America to play as, or any country to play as, as well as, as, well as custom game rules, but I decided to go ahead and just go straight into it because, well, I have already reorganized, to a degree, the Navy. So that actually took a while. Regardless, let's go and do our first focus together. Now, the weird thing about America, I don't really know if I really like this or not, but a lot of the thing is already done, the focus tree here. Like, they've already done the campaign trail, secure the party, the Republicans and Democrats are now one party. We can, can't do, we, they have a dream. What focuses can we do? Uh, bend to the segregationists, t toe the middle line, stuff like that. Let's see, we've got the Cold War. Now, right now, all we can do is either smash the crest wave or cracking the steel curtain, which we can only hope to defeat Germany by dismantling her sphere. Uh, or we can... Asian opportunities will be open to us. Indian subcontinent. Ooh. Open a wealth of opportunities. Oh, India. I kind of like India. Interesting. Ooh. Our money. Let's start with something beautiful. Ooh. American-Indian relations. Very nice. Strike the match. Well, let's see. Forgotten allies. Uh, we get stability and stuff like that. That's cracking the steel curtain. In the words aftermath, Germania drew a line hugging the stretch of Europe's coast between Norway's and fjords and the Strait of Gibraltar. Along its length rose a string of watchtowers, seawalls, and con... Concertina wire. There seems held together by trillions of Reichsmarks and the Führer's Aryan will. This stranglehold over the old world goes by deceptive names like the Einheits Pact and Fortress Europa. The free world calls it for what it is a steel curtain. The Vauxhall would have would have one believe that the steel curtain is as the Gibraltar Dam, impregnable, insurmountable, and everlasting. In truth, this curtain is pregnant with rot, surmounted by power struggles, and frail on a deathbed, much like its architect Hitler. Subtle blows can make gaps out of its rustiest sections, their liberties torchlight can filter back into the continent afresh. Cool. We got dismantle the sphere, we got four research slots. Let's see, it is 1962, so military construction? Why not? Over here, I'm going to go with more cap. That looks good. And what else? 62. Done. We could get more fuel, but we're America. So, actually, ooh, fuel is not looking great. Daily gain is only 12.6 thousand. Only 12.6 thousand. We seem to be a little advanced. I'll be honest, this this is a completely blind playthrough. I have never played as America in TNO. Not even in my own time at the time of this recording. So, anything I do, I have no idea what's going to happen. I really have no idea. Infantry weapons. Oh, actually... Before we do that, let's get light aircraft. We got this, we got this stuff. We can't get this. Let's see. Heavy aircraft, air doctrine. We could do some of that. Helicopters. We have some scout planes, it looks like already, which is pretty cool. Uh, instead, let's go ahead and grab ooh, artillery, artillery, tanks. How are tanks doing? We have 1962 stuff. Uh, and actually, let's get some heat integration just because I've already set up the armies for us. We have nothing but tanks. I don't know what America's thinking, but okay, why not? But we do have a few Marines and Airborne Divisions, which actually, what do they use? Anti-tank, artillery, infantry equipment, motorized support equipment, and transport helicopters. I don't think... I actually took those off when I was redoing this, so... Transport helicopters. Where are they? Oh, I might have done that. Transport helicopters. I didn't realize I would need, actually needed that. Pre-war, early transports, early interceptors. Ooh, improved biplane, that's kind of cool. Let's see. Improved jet tactical bombers. Did I? I might have passed it. I don't see any helicopters here, though. Yeah, these are all planes. Oh, maybe it's over here. It might be over here. There we go. Tr early helicopters. Improved he transport. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, that is not out of date. Ready for production. Thank you. Go do that. And let's take that off. Cool. My bad. My bad. And we got to make some dockyards, which actually I already limited to what we should be able to make. Uh, honestly, I love carriers. We have quite a few of them. This is a cruiser. Now, this cruiser, I know I'm spending some time doing this just because it happens every campaign. Now, is this a capital ship? Rapid fire guns. This is a light cruiser. That's good. Let's see. We don't have any more of that stuff. Anti-air. I'm sorry. Even though TNO has updated itself with uh, like having the UI a little bit less hard less hard to read it's still a little foreign to me i guess you could say in terms of me just looking at something and knowing instantly what it is so uh you know what we'll grab some of these in there you go some like uh lights screens light cruisers and this is a class we just made and actually i want to change this because this is actually there you go because it's not a capital ship see if i see the symbol the shield it's not a capital ship actually I'll, I'll, i'm gonna make two of them 
And then we're going to make a few more... Hmm. Subs would not be bad. Then again, I don't want to produce too many... Yeah, they have so many open holes. I don't mind making light cruisers. So, actually, you know what? Let's go with... Cruiser 1. Uh, actually, you're, you're kind of heavy. You're actually very heavy. What is this? You're heavier than the other one. This is a capital ship. This is a heavy cruiser. Okay, I don't care about heavy cruisers. Uh, let's see, a destroyer. Let's make some destroyers. I'm going to make screens for now. That's fine. Uh, okay, good. No, but our infantry divisions are made up of tanks. God, I love America. We might need that. I'm not sure if we really need it. Maybe, I mean, we only have so much fuel. Mechanized divisions. Uh, the mechanized divisions are better tanks than the infantry divisions, which is weird to say. Armored divisions are where it's at, though, so. Hopefully, we don't get into too many conflicts, but obviously, we'll see what happens. For, oh, oh I didn't click on that. Oh, we're going to be running out of fuel soon. Within 12 days, that's not ideal. What do we have for budget? Oh, my goodness. Minus, oh, that looks so good. Oh, that debt. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, the debt is, the interest, though, is lower than the growth, which is good for us. I'm going to go ahead and slash spending, so because we probably don't need it right now. Rubber press. That was really fast. Holy crap. I could increase civilian spending. What are we building up? We're building up one, two, three, three and a half-ish lines of civilian factories. That's okay with me. I'm not going to cut civilian spending, but I'm not going to increase it at the same time either. Wait, how do we get rubber... Wait. The end of the missile crisis. Did we just get rubber... I I'm not sure what happened anymore. Okay, so anyways, the end of the missile crisis. For the past weeks, several weeks actually, the U.S. has been embroiled in a crisis with Japan. Our former jewel in the Pacific, Hawaii, has been turned into a staging point for Japanese medium-range ballistic missiles, which were discovered by CIA UC UTC spy planes not long ago. After a tense standoff between the USN, or the United States Navy First Fleet, and the Imperial Japanese Navy, Vice President Kennedy approached the Empire with an offer. The U.S. would remove its own MRBMs from Australia in return for the Japanese doing the same in Hawaii. After several rounds of tense negotiations, this offer was accepted, despite the urging of the Joint Chiefs, who argued there was a perfect time to reclaim America's lost legacy, or territory. This doves uh, prevailed. And today, both sides are removing our missiles. This has been a major diplomatic coup for Kennedy, who is being hailed as, across the nation as a hero for his actions in the crisis. President Nixon, on the other hand, mostly stayed out of the negotiation, has been widely criticized for such. We've stayed off the net for now. And, ah, uh, tricky dick. Ah, uh, Milhouse. I, didn't, I, I always forget that his middle name is Milhouse. That's actually kind of cool. And, okay, so Americans, American politics are just weird. Like, even in modern times, they're weird, but, like, we have the Republicans and Democrats under one party, and we have the National Progressive Party in the other one. Obviously, Hawaii is no longer part of us. We no longer have San Francisco or L.A., which is really just god-awful. Uh, I'll be honest, like I said earlier, I, this is a completely blind run-through of playing as America. So, my goal is that we can emphasize making money. That's all I care about in this campaign so far. It's just going to make as much money, get the GDP as high as it can, keep interest low. I want to make America money make as much as possible. But anyway, German moon landing. German today proudly announced to the world that the German rock was the first to ever step on the moon. Eberhard Kölner, using a rocket based upon the A9 slash A10 design from World War II and as a member of the team led by acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun, successfully landed along with a team predominantly made up of former Luftwaffe pilots. Kölner, on live TV broadcast globally, snapped a smart salute to the flag of the Reich with the earth visible in the backdrop, a photo which has spread across the globe thanks in no part to German propaganda. Jubilant celebrations almost began immediately across Germany. Already, President Nixon has publicly vowed that the race shall continue and that NASA is already making preparations for a permanent human presence upon the moon in the form of a lunar colony. The President's announcement was quickly followed by one from Japan, who stated they will land on Mars, despite the President's insistence that the race is not over. The American public has taken the news poorly, although America managed to get the first astronaut into space, public confidence in the space program is at an all-time low, as few Americans then ever look to the night sky with a sense of explorative awe. We begrudgingly congratulate Mr. Kolner. So basically, it sounds like we're the Soviets, because like in our timeline, the Soviets got into space first, but we landed on the moon first, and but the Germans did it this time. We'll see what happens with Germany, because even though they're looking nice and thick, they're probably not going to stay that way for quite a while. That's okay. And I, like, I know investing in GDP is much more important than cutting off, cutting down, putting down debt, but. Mm, Oh, assassin strikes Mr. Schmettler. News from Germany today is sporadic at best. The CIA assets in Germany have reported that shortly after celebrations over the moon landing began to settle, German military units and several platoons worth of German dictator's various bodyguard units filled the streets and immediately put the city under martial law. 
from what we are hearing, an assassin, which the Germans claim belonged to the Japanese Ken Pai Tai, attempted to kill the Fuhrer, but was stopped in his attempt by one of Hitler's personal bodyguards and killed on the spot. Already, reports of several assassinations have surfaced, as the various politicians in the Reichstag initially believed Hitler to have been killed, and began long-planned plots to eliminate their rivals in the chaos. In the streets, the various military units nearly came to blows, as various units ordered one another to stand down, and the chain of command broke down. While the situation has begun to recover, martial law is still in effect in Germania, and suddenly, the Reich seems much weaker. In Washington, this raises the question, how can the Germans maintain their new world order when they can hardly handle themselves. As one eagle falls, another rises. Well, hopefully, unless they go extinct, and hopefully that never happens, because America is beautiful. Anyways, we are, of course, in the OF. And what is our national spirit? Bas last bastion of liberty. Cool. We have the American Malays. America was once a nation of indomitable will, a nation so bountiful and spirited that its optimism seemed unconquerable. That was ended by the atomic bombing of Pearl Harbor. Now, across each and every one of these in the United States, the country is mired in a malaise with only a dim light at the end of the tunnel. The land of opportunity and idealism has been overcome by poverty and strife. It is a pit that may not be surmounted easily, and only time will tell of the patriotic fire that once burned in American hearts shall return. Stella dreams. He roared in his rocket ship above the earth. As he gazed through the capsule window at the continent stretched out beneath him, he realized just how small... Mankind truly was. It occurred to him that if every human being had the opportunity to see what he could see, how insignificant all the struggles and wars and vendettas were, the world might finally know peace. A peace where everyone could work towards the investment of science, prosperity, and a sudden ringing cut across his psyche. And he was jolted from a dream of days past. Sitting sluggishly awake from his sadly earthbound bed, he fumbled for the telephone on the bedside cabinet and pulled the receiver to his ear. John Glenn speaking. Way too early in the morning, I might add. A uh, panicked voice came across the line. John, it's James. Have you heard the news? Glenn rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and replied, James Edwin Webb. I've not even got out of bed yet. Be more specific. They're defunding NASA. Uh, hastily made coffee and frantic flipped through the morning paper later. John Glenn felt a wrench in his gut as he faced the prospect of his life's work being off or not. So what? The Germans got to the moon first and that just means space is over? What can we do? They can't just give up on the future. Nixon's already made up his mind. He wants to move the money over to the military and other practical projects. Webb paused as Glenn made an outraged and take a breath. I really don't think there's anything that can stop him at this point. I'm sorry, John. Glenn felt himself back into the river of space flight. The government cannot let the dream of space but be but a dream. America had to live to see the stars. There's nothing we can do. We'll see about that. Some men still dream. And let's see. We also have Jim Crow. Yeah. Yep, Jim Crow. Yep. Oh, yeah. Class 3 Senate election season. Military austerity. Of course, we just did that. And OFUN, OFN unity somewhat. This looks not too bad. The U.S. is once again gearing up for the election season. Ah, great, always. As per the Constitution, all the seats in the House of Representatives and a third of the Senate seats will be up for grabs in November, along with innumerable state and local races across the nation. And the course of American politics will change with it. Status quo or radical people, it's time for the people to, to decide. The Republican Democrats and the National Progressive Party, along with numerous third parties, are gearing up their political machines across the 50 states, with special focus going to the Senate seats up for grabs. Tens of thousands of volunteers, campaign staff, and candidates are gearing up to begin the primaries, rallies, whistle stop tours, public speeches, glad handing, and debates that will dominate the nation's attention for the next few months. Issues of great reports will be debated. Candidates will be scrutinized. And eventually millions of voters around the nation will get to the chance to make their voices heard. And the greatest democracy in the world will once again, once again prove itself. Keep America strong and free. Vote R&D. Well, that's kind of a nice slogan. The Senate elections and the predictions will now be visible on the decision menu. Uh, locks decisions to campaign for the Republican Democrats. Fighting for you and me. Help elect the NPP. Oh, another nice little slogan. Oh, crap. I have to make a choice now? I just want to make money. Um, let's see. George Wallace, JFK, Nixon, Jackson. Um, I want to say that the Republicans probably want to make more money. But then again, I don't know. I really don't know. And since this is a blind playthrough, it seems like it might be easier. Ooh, the party splits. Ooh. Civil rights. Veto it. The progressives will not be happy. Crack down on the movement. Oh my goodness. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with a Republican Democrat. I know it's an easy boomer answer, but I promise I'll play America quite a few different times as time goes on. Just because America is going to be a lot more fun, especially as TNO gets more uh, content. So, ooh, shifting Irish politics towards democracy. Ooh. Contract Jewish paramilitaries. Jewish paramilitaries. That sounds awesome okay so anyways the republican democrat party is ready for anything uh working together as well one flew over the cuckoo's nest from the sun-drenched toes 
a revanche-laden neighborhoods and wild underground economies of, of the Bay Area, comes the debut novel of one Ken Kesey. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's bizarre, profane, provocative, and a gauntlet thorn under the table of American literature, inspired by Kesey's work as a psychiatric orderly in Menlo Park, California. The novel follows one Randall McMurphy. McMurphy, a veteran of Scotland and proud street brawler, is, in sentence, is sentenced to time in a psychiatric hospital for battery and illicit gambling. There he meets a number of characters, including the novel's character Chief Bromden and the tyrannical head nurse Nurse Ratchet. Over the course of the novel, McMurphy challenges Ratchet's rule, standing up for himself and other patients in the ward. He is rewarded for this with a lobotomy, courtesy of Ratchet. The novel ends with Bromden smothering McMurphy in an act of mercy before escaping to freedom. Cuckoo's Nest has already garnered its fair share of accolades and controversy, or controversy alike. Many are calling it a portrayal of America's own authoritarian systems in an age where the nation supposedly a bastion of liberty in the world. Hollywood star Kirk Douglas is rumored to be seeking adaptation rights, while schools across America are rumored to be banning it. I'm so crazy, I plan to vote for Eisenhower again this November. Uh, a protest in Birmingham, the civil rights movement is reaching its crescendo. All across America, there are protests, rallies, and riots hosted by the civil rights activists, and they get worse by the month. Just this week, a massive march was held in Birmingham, Alabama, the heart of the segregation of South, where tens of thousands of activists, white and black alike, call for equal rights. Although it is sort of civil, local police chief Eugene Bull Connor quickly deployed riot police and set dogs loose on the protesters. The peaceful march quickly turned into a running battle in the streets between police and activists. This event had been widely televised across the nation, with average Americans shocked by the police brutality on display in Birmingham. Many more than more liberal news sources across the U.S. have likened the events in Alabama to those in Germany decades ago, citing police brutality and the suppression of activists to draw parallels with Nazi regime. Uh, worrying. Sounds like they still say, say sort of the same thing today. Yaki's? Oh man, I know he doesn't have a focus group. I want to play as Yaki someday though. Uh, increased party unity. Cool. The upcoming Senate race. Oh my gosh. You can see everything here. Oh, good lord. Elections for class 3 senators are coming up. The following states have senators up for election. This is so much information right now. It's not super, super important, I guess, but... Oh, my goodness. Campaign. Uh, where do I want to campaign? Oregon is NPP center. With NPP with a small lead. Uh, the Senate is probably the most important... Ooh, this is a toss-up in Georgia. Uh, Republican, 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 Republican. Democrat and Republican are fine. Alabama, of course, is far right. Uh, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. Cool. That seems to mostly just Republican and Democrat right now. I'm going to go ahead and do the West Coast. And this is 15% chance of great success. 50% chance of good showing. 20% of a middling performance. 15% of an awful blunder. And the West Coast this includes from the cities of San Fran, LA, Seattle. From pretty much the entire West Coast, which is good. Sometimes they don't say that, but let's do the West Coast first. 30 days. Cool. Let's see what happens. I have no idea. Oh, look at that. Manpower. Uh, and Borman has now been named successor. I'm sorry, I, I I don't like seeing debt. I should really invest in the GDP, but only if you invest it into the GDP, you only get half of it, which hurt, pains me on the inside. It really does not like it. Oh, oh crap, there's a lot. No, I say to you, my friends, that in spite of difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I have still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American uh, dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and li outlive or live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a desert, sta desert state, sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my poor children will one day live in a nation where they cannot be judged by the, or will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. On the steps of Lincoln Memorial, a prominent civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr., gave a speech to ground crowd of over a quarter million people. His words have already spread across the country like wildfires, men and women, black and white alike. Spread, uh, spread a new slogan, I have a dream. The time for action is now. I have a dream. Cool. Uh, counter protests in Birmingham. One week ago, civil rights activists held a protest in Birmingham, Alabama. They quickly devolved into a riot. Now, tens of thousands of people opposed to the civil rights movement have staged a countermarch, waving the flags of the Confederacy, their home state, and even a few swastikas. In comparison to the previous week, the police chief didn't even bother deploying more than a few lightly equipped beat cops, several of which joined in the protest. Furthermore, the reports that some pro civil rights activists attempting to flock to Birmingham to continue the movement have been driven out of the city by the police and locals alike, with several would be protesters returning home battered and bruised. I'm going to invest more in construction. Oh crap, that was a bad idea. With the rising violence in Birmingham and elsewhere, Vice President Kennedy had reportedly convinced President Nixon to consider federalizing the Alabama National Guard and deploying it to restore order in the state. Even more worrying. How fun. Yeah, maybe I should not have done that, because even though I love, 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 love building up. One, two, three, four. Maybe I should slash it again. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Cracking the steel curtain. The party splits. Ooh. Anything else around here? Anything else? Let's zoom all the way out. Nope. Okay, then. The South African plan. To involve ourselves in South Africa will be unlocked. Uh, the first domino fallen. Norwegian resistance. Forgotten allies. I do want to get stability more. It's only 1%, though. 
bring out the tinderbox. Uh, Indian subcontinent. Hmm. I want to expand American business rights. I want to be rich. South Africa is one of the last true democratic strongholds left in Africa. We're not fully opposed to working with us. Yet the presence of the Nazi scum north of them makes their existence and our chance to make use of such an African foothold possibly very short to combat this. A plan has been drawn up to slowly draw the U.S. and South Africa together in order to protect the democracy and to weaken the grip of German fascism in Africa as a whole. Now let's go back to our military units here just because I know Guyana eventually just rises up against us, which is not very cool. Oh, the heck is this? This is my first time ever seeing the West Indies Federation. Mr. Adams? Oh, I didn't realize that we were all in the same faction. Oh, wait. Well, they're a client state of us. Which is fine with me. Uh, I know that these guys might get taken out eventually. They have a port there. I'm going to leave my guys... Okay, they, I'm going to leave these Marines where they have a port, so that's good. I have Marines over in Australia and San Diego as well. Because Australia, Darwin. Uh, let's see, come over here. And Charlotte? Oh, I love Charlotte. I was, I, well, I guess I'll let you know now that I was born in Charlotte. Anyways, uh, come down here. Just in case. I don't want things to go poorly down here, so... Oh, what do we have up here? Opposition's camp. Oh, oh, they do a campaign. Oh, they are doing what? National, it's an incredible campaign. Cracking Fortress Europe. President Nixon stared at the world map projected onto a screen in the White House briefing room. At the center was America, circled facing the Japanese and the colonial minions to the west, and the Germans and their slave empire to the east. But where the Japanese Americans had only recently escaped Armageddon's embrace in Hawaii, the Nazi Empire was fraying at it seems. Hitler grew older and more infirm by the day. No amount of Lover, camera work, and pre recorded speeches could add his crackling gait, and his once mesmerizing oratory shrunk it into senile ramblings. Germany's moon landing was not a triumph, it was an epitaph. Secretary of Defense Melvin Laird looked up from his latest CIA intelligence brief on the German Reich. It's a house of cards, Mr. President. Bren chased under a foreign occupier. Brittany already deals with us in secret, and the Norwegians continue to resist decades of occupation, and their African colonies will wither on the vines without support. All held together by a man who can't finish a sentence without forgetting how it started, Nixon noted. When Hitler goes, his successors will fall over themselves to split the spoils like Alexander's generals did in antiquity. Laird handed over a sheaf of documents from the CIA folder. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. We'll never get another shot at crippling the Nazis like this. It's time to go back to the old world and have a sip of this nice... Freedom-loving American coffee. Hmm. Good stuff, my friends. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, this is really interesting that if we look at the election map, it's really kind of cool. So, Illinois has... is purple. Purple. Hmm. Well, let's speed it up just a little bit more. And the defense of the stars. John Glenn stood before an assembled mass of scientists, engineers, and science enthusiasts, and journalists. He already spoken with a few people and shared their frustrations at NASA's situation. Talked about his experiences as an astronaut, and even signed a couple of autographs. Now we need to make a big splash. I have just been... I have just been having a pleasant dream about my last mission, when my good friend James Webb woke... With, woke me with the news. I was distraught, to say the least, to know that the government was giving up on the future of space travel, partly because of the thought of never going up there myself again is saddening to consider, but that's not the only reason. By ending our involvement in space, President Nixon has given up. He has accepted stagnation and decline, abandoning the stars to the fascist powers. He said we lost a space race, but as long as the stars will shine, space will never be lost. I implore that the President reconsider his options. The future of America and the human species as a whole lies above us. About 20 minutes later, Glenn made his closing remarks and was greeted with raucous applause. He felt satisfied that his words had hit their mark, and with so many journalists in attendance tomorrow's papers would carry them still further. Yet he still felt defeated. His words alone would not be enough to save NASA. If Americans, or if American space travel is to have a future, it would need a voice to represent it in the hall of power. John Glenn had never been one for politics, but as he thought on it, he realized that political office may be his best course of seeing his dream fulfilled. As he drove home, he recalled that Ohio's governorship was up for election in a few months. It was almost a crazy thought, and yet, an astronaut in space? Hmm. Why not? Yep, I'm really tempted to slash my construction budget, or just get rid of civilian spending. Actually, you know what? Let's try that. It's early in the game. It probably won't affect us. One, two, three, four, four. Almost four and a half. I do that. That's okay. And one, two, three. Yeah, almost, almost four. Actually, that's not bad. I'll keep construction like this. Go ahead and pay off some more debt. There you go. 130 goes down to what? Almost nothing. <laughs> Almost nothing. A good RD campaign. The results of our most recent regional campaign have been generally positive. Fundraising and cash on hand are meeting our most positive expectations. Meanwhile, our candidates are performing well in the polls and have generally avoided making gas and un forced errors while out on the campaign trail. We should be in good position with a number of races come November. Good to hear. Can I campaign anywhere else? Uh, shows the NPP leading. 
They run okay, great. They run a miserable campaign according to the front pages of local newspapers around the country. The most recent NPP regional campaign has collapsed in spectacular fashion. Between poor fundraising numbers, low voter enthusiasm, and a series of bizarre gaps by the NPP candidates, we will be a likely be able to do well in November through their failures alone. Isn't there a German word for this feeling? A house divided. A house divided cannot stand against itself. And, well, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I apologize for speaking too, qu too quickly. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it to be, well, it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other, Abraham Lincoln. Although the institution of slavery was torn down at the end of the Civil War by the 13th Amendment, a failed reconstruction and decades of Jim Crow ensured that the issue of race would or would not be, could not be solved. As the divides within the Republican, Democrat, or party grow, debates turn to fights and friends turning to enemies, the truth only becoming clearer and clearer. The party as it stands cannot be saved. Yet there's no, there's still time to act. America must once re again reckon with the issue of race, be it through words or war. We can only pray for less blood to be shed this time around, and for the fate of the world rests upon the near divided house. Can't you just two play, just play nice? Come on. Oh, crap. Well, that's not good. So, do I get a campaign anywhere else, or is it just like, we done? Increase party unity. I mean, that'd be good to do. So, the president is not directly elected by the American people. Instead, Americans elect a slate of state electors based on population size to vote for a candidate on their behalf. While party popularity is important in presidential elections as well, members of a faction are far more likely to vote for a candidate who share their views. Cool, family dinner. The Dirksen Building's cafeteria was a common haunt for senators on a lunch break. Today, they would play host to a most prestigious pair. Vice President JFK sat thoroughly chewing on a turkey sandwich. Opposite of him sat a smiling man who the party registry knew as his chief of staff, but who John has always known as his brother. It's been too long since we've taken our time for ourselves, said John with a smile. How are you, Bobby? Ethel still taking good care of you, I hope. Robert Francis Kennedy laughed at the playful wink in his brother his brother gave him. I can hardly complain on the home life, Jack. His grin faded. Still, current events haven't been exactly great for my sleep. The older Kennedy nodded sympathetically. The violence is getting worse for sure, he frowned. Nixon being a stick in the mud about it isn't helping things either. He won't endorse any legislation on the matter. Can't you do something about it? As long as the president sits on the fence, things will only get worse. I'd love to, but you know how Nixon is, muttered John, idly stirring his coffee. Knowing him, he'd probably just veto whatever we put in front of him and yell at us for fracturing party unity. But this is far more important than party unity, Jack. There are millions of Americans, millions of good, honest people being cast aside for things that are far beyond their control. The longer we wait, the greater their suffering will be. Fixing his brother with an intense but encouraging look, he continued, You're the vice president. At the very least, you can use your voice in the name of those who have no voice. John was silent for a moment, then he smiled. You've always been a good man, Bobby. You are right. Of course, I must act. Family matters. I love the show. Family matters. Uh, German spy arrested. According to his landlord, Joseph Greenberg was a rather unassuming fellow. He paid his rent on time. Never had any noise complaints and always helped old Miss... Connors carry her groceries up the stairs. In reality, this was all a cover, something the landlord learned when she opened Greenberg's empty apartment to the sight of piles of surveillance equipment and folders with swastika stamped upon them. Thinking quite quickly, she called the police, who in turn for informed the FBI and arrested Greenberg this morning as he left for work. Joseph Greenberg was a real dude, actually be Joseph or Josef Hansen, an agent for the German Abwehr. Ironically disguised as a Jewish American, his mission was to secure a job at Bell Telephone, study their communications infrastructure, and identify laws or flaws for the installation of wiretaps and other espionage methods. Even more concerning was that his phone book had the telephone number of several local NPP politicians inside, and seems he was trying to contact the party's French elements, including the fascist agitator Francis Parker Yaki. Charges for a violation of the Espionage Act are already being brought against him, though he will likely end up simply being deported back to Germany rather than facing a long-term prison term or a prison sentence in the U.S. That's one less Nazi to worry about. Woo! That is interesting. International CIA operations, huh? Ah, South African plan. Ooh, campaign for monarchist cause in South Africa? Ooh. Our commitment to American... To African, not American, but African democracy. Progressives and the Senate will more likely support an African intervention. I'm going to expand business ties. If we're to truly defend South Africa from fascist encroachment, we need to make it worth defending. If we can encourage American businesses to invest in South Africa, not only can we expect support and even financing from them, but we can also expect them to no more complaints and need no further justification to defend South Africa. No one will be able to complain. Money's upon the line now after all. Our commitments in South Africa grow. You know, if they, if they explode, so be it. That's fine. We can deal with a little bit of an explosion in South Africa because we can help them out probably. Rockies? Ooh, who's next? So... Incumbent shows the MPP is leading. Is there anywhere where we're not leading? It looks like the Deep South might need a little bit more Republican Democrat influence, which, as an American, sounds not great. <laughs> oh, our manpower keeps going down. Then again, I did decrease military spending, so what do you expect? And the Deep South. Deep South is a very hot place to live. Oh my goodness. Very hot. 
Mm, upcoming Senate race. Uh, I could probably close International CIA operations. The South African Tango. Secretary of State William Rogers was well familiar with the steps of the South African Tango. The South Amer African ambassador would ask in vague generalities about admission into the OFN, but without any real plans for common defense or tariff liberalization. The secretary would, in turn, respond with vague updates on South Africa's application, now nearly a decade old. It suited both parties. The South Africans wanted the threat of OFN membership to cow the Germans, and the OFN needed to preserve the last democracy in Africa. Neither, however, wanted a German intervention, which OFN membership could provide. Both. Thus, the South African tango continued on without end. How can I help you today, Ambassador? Rogers struck a neutral tone to hide his boredom. It was near certain that the response would be entirely predictable. We're doing very well, and about that OFN application would be the usual response. The Germans are making their move, Ambassador William Christians uh, now declared. Herzog's Boer nationalists are talking to the Germans. South Africa's in danger. We need America's help. That got Rogers' attention as his stomach dropped at the most at this most unexpected turn in the decades-long discourse. What kind of help are we talking about? Financial, intelligence, but above all, military. Naud said firmly, if the Boers and Germans want to fight, we won't make it easy for them. No more dancing, no more games, but I want to go dancing. I want to learn how to dance. <sighs> Budget-wise. Minus two billion, not bad. Construction. Uh, I could I could slash a booty slash civilian spending. So that's already looking good. One, two, three, four. Sure, we get less political power because we slash civilian spending, but whatever. Once this comes back to normal uh, spending habits, then we'll go back and slash construction. So heat integration. After we and we'll read about the other America. Uh, more tanks. Yes, please. The APFSDS. Cool. The other America. Many residents of the post-war Europe often heard stories about life in the promising U.S. Children listened intently as a grandparent spoke of immigrants going from rags to riches within a few years of their arrival. Seeing how the fatherland neglected to print stories about life in America, citizens under the jackboot could only rely on their relatives for accurate portrayal. It was uncommon for foreigners to contemplate whether there truly is poverty in the promised land of America. Oh, there is. Michael Harrington's novel, The Other America, debuted in bookstores across the country today. The novel discusses the issues of poverty in the U.S. and exposes readers to a significant number of Americans living below the poverty line. Harrington claims that many poor residents live in social isolation and are not commonly seen by the middle and upper classes. He calls for politicians to take immediate and remedial action to rid the country of every aspect of poverty. Critics of the novel disagree with Harrington's socialist tendencies, but most readers agree that with the call to action. The book has already gained influence on the number of politicians in the capital who want to create a better country for every citizen, rich or poor. Economists are already devising ways to make education and health care more accessible in the country. America's biggest mis misconception debunked. You're always going to have someone who is in poverty. Always. Probably. Hmm. Cool. 0.52. Money, money, money. Not a lot of the worst part because we slashed the budget, I think. Oh, we have private health care, 25 to 50% poverty rate, educational deferment, military policing, military assistance, civilian austerity. Polls are updated. The science and art of opinion polling has rapidly turned into one of the most important aspects of any election campaign in America. The weekly and monthly poll, usually conducted by newspapers with the help of organizations like Gallup, is used by campaigns, candidates, and the general public as a way to measure the horse race that is American elections. By calling thousands of people across the U.S., balancing political bias and location, and judging the margin of error, it can be fairly accurately determined, within a few percentage points of the popularity of the candidates and their ideas. And of course, there always can be surprises and flaws with the polls, with underrepresentation or biased questions giving flawed answers. But until electors go into the booth and make their choices, this is the best info we got. Let's check in on the horse race. Just in case, I'm going to go close it out, reopen it. 45 are Republicans, 40 are Democrats, 5 are center, 5 are 8 are far right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Florida. Ooh, small lead. And, and Alabama. And not really much has changed. Okay. It, it's still Republican or Democrat, so. Strong lead. Strong lead. So I guess if you really want to go with NPP, you've really got to force it much more. Because Republicans and Democrats are still pretty much the incumbents and. They don't give up lightly. Of course, then again, I don't think anyone would in a situation like this. Slowly slashing that down further and further. I know. It's probably not worth investing. That's okay. I just want more money. A good RD campaign. We've already read this, so good to hear. So the call. The Oval Office, in a rare moment of peace, lies silent. No aides stand by, no cameras are present. No interruptions are tolerated, not even on the cusp of such crit crucial news. President Richard Nixon sits at his desk, anxiously signing a few inconsequential documents, shooting a few expectant glances at the telephone to his right. He re realizes his pile of unsigned papers have been exhausted, just as he kicks back in his chair to relax after a long day the phone rings. He already knows the caller and for what he calls. The National Assembly of Guyana would soon finish voting on their National Security Act, and William Rogers would be the first to know the results. Give it to me straight, Rogers. It was a landslide deck, barely more than a quarter voted down. Uh, they're afraid of Burn Burnham, Nixon muses. This should be n now more than ever. He'll crack down on anyone who threatens a peace. P 
Political rivals, anti-segregationists, anyone and everyone, Roger declares. Why do we put that bastardido in power anyways? The press is just going to have a field day. Nixon slams the phone back into his cradle, laying back in his seat and rubbing the bridge of his nose. He knows that disaster looms. What have we gotten ourselves into? Ooh. Military intervention. Please, please, please. Also, usually my videos only last half an hour long, but especially the first one. But because this is this is TNO, I'm going to really extend it a little bit more. Oh, so they run a good campaign. While they aren't blowing us out of the water by any stretch, their fundraising has been solid, their candidates are appealing, and their voter enthusiasm is where it needs to be for them to win in November. We still have time to catch up. That's not good. Expand. Wait, but we did get more business ties. Yes? Our commitment to African, Demer African democracy. Africa is a damned continent, nearly whole controlled by despots and fascists, with what little free land remaining have been returned to the Stone Age. Yet even in the darkest of rooms, there is a beacon of light, and just as we are the light of democracy for the world, we shall defend South Africa and make them the beacon of democracy and light in a dark continent. Nice. Definitely about South Africa first, because that's what I think I, I think that's what I normally see first in almost pretty much every campaign, so... Cool. Conversations about, or from the street. Two young men walked down the street of L.A., basking in the midday sun, but the topic of their conversation was distinctly gloomier. So did you hear about the Nazi spy caught out in New York? They're saying that he was trying to get in touch with a Yaki of all people. It's crazy, isn't it? The other replied. I know how much they hate the Japs. Yeah, who doesn't hear? But never thought they'd get in bed with the Krauts. The spy was reaching out to them. They didn't say anything about them agreeing to anything, the first man continued. The two men, like plenty of others out in California, had their own sympathies towards the NPP, after all. Everyone in L.A. or the Bay Area had to live only a few miles away from the humiliating reminder of 1945, and the NPP were the only ones who seemed to have any interest in getting the treaty ports back. He turned to his friends and asked, So what do you think? Was Yaki in it or nah? We're going to later hold it underneath. Sounds like a lot of calm, commie bull. Um, I want to say, if you say commie load of bull, i got to go for that one, so... Uh, two, one, two, four, five, five, nice. Oh, we got one more sibling factory, didn't we? So, one, two, three, four, A! Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, let's campaign. Let's see. So, the Deep South is still a problem. Small lead in Pennsylvania in the East Coast. Uh, what else we got? East Coast, small lead, strong lead. Illinois is a small lead with Republicans and Democrats. Strong, 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 strong. The Great Plains are great. Uh, as well as the Rockies. If we do West Coast again, with a strong lead, strong lead, I really don't like this. West Coast, we should try that. It's either the West Coast or the Deep South. Mm, ooh, I'm not really sure. We did that one. I want to do the Deep we, we, we just did the Deep South. Let's do West Coast again. Because I want to see if we can maybe convert Oregon or Washington. I know it really doesn't matter. And probably it would be better if I did somewhere to like, not the Great Plains or Rockies. But maybe, even the Great Lakes are doing great. Southwest is doing great. Uh, it's so much easier when you have one party state, right? It's almost one party state, except for the NPP. Uh, let's see, South Carolina has the NPP, of course, Deep South, long nads with the sunrise. William Rogers sat quietly on a large, ugly couch, intensely, or intently, listening to the Daily News morning. Morning! The pa recent passing of the National Security Act has allowed the Guyanese government to seize hundreds of critics and political agitators, as well as executing dozens more. The Guyanese president, Forbes Burnham, has stated that the raids strengthened the Guyanan Republic and its democratic system. Exile former President Chetty Jagan issued a statement. A couple dozen people crowded the room. Eight secretaries and even a few senators, all sitting in pure silence as a low hum of the television and its tiny speakers, recite the unfortunate news. Roger sighs, deciding he has heard enough. Standing up, he shuffles over to the TV and turns it off. He turns around and looks at the two dozen or so people crowded into the sitting room, their expectant eyes locked upon him, their ears awaiting his word. He pauses for a moment. No one speaks to the press, not yet. Not the president, not the press secretary, not me, not any of you. Not a word until we figure out our next step, understand? A series of nods acknowledge his message. Now someone get me a phone line to the president. We need to arrange a cabinet meeting quickly. Yes, Mr. President, we need to do this now. Social democracy gets more support, and the popularity of the NPP grows a little bit more. Oh, Republican Party's incumbent. Show Polls show a toss-up in New Hampshire. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That is not good. So I guess we'll do next is New England, maybe. Because even Vermont is a small lead with Republican Democrats. Connecticut, though? They are very good, though. Army interoperability. We're going to continue doing it land auction, because we will have to use it soon enough. We're going to go and grab artillery barrage, because I love artillery so much. Ah, oh, I love artillery. Slowly bringing this down. God, that's a lot of debt. Oh, come on, give me more growth. Oh, there goes military already. Nope. Bye-bye. The meeting. President Nixon sits at the head of the table. 
bolt upright, a, a contemplative look on his face. All along the magnificent mahogany table, the presidential cab cabinet is seated, from the Secretary of Veteran Affairs far at the end to Jack Kennedy and H.R. Haldeman, sitting next to the president. So far, no one has said a word, aside from a few curt greetings. H.R. Haldeman breaks the palpable science. I think we all know why we're here. Our friend in Guyana has gone too far. We needed to do something about it. The Secretary of the Treasury, Robert McNamara, follows Haldeman's lead and spoke next. Uh, Nixon still bearing an angry yet contemplative look. The president has no more involvement in his election. We still need to threaten constricting economic ties, sanctions, condemnations, and political isolation. Frankly, Bob, he'll get traded from somewhere else. Hell, even when Germany gets back on its feet, we'll all be in trouble because that's where he'll get it from. The cross would jump at the chance for an ally right on our doorstep. Kennedy cuts in, his sharp Massachusetts accent gambling, grabbing the attention of the room. What do you suggest? McNamara asks. Use or clout in the country. Threats, bribes, and blackmail. McNamara shakes his head no. Just apply pressure for him to repeal the act. If we threaten him, he'll double down on his opposition. Any MP of theirs he suspects might turn against him will face retribution. We can't top that if only for moral reasons. Slowly the room evolves into conflicting arguments. Various cabinet members arguing for an exile army, others for isolation. Suddenly a voice cuts through the clamor. That's enough. The head of the table has spoken. Nixon stands and then speaks. I don't care about it either way. I just want the press and Burnham both to calm the hell down. Force some pressure. It doesn't matter. Get the act repealed. He turned to Haldeman, nodding. I'll do it either way, but I want your word, Haldeman. Sanctions are enough to pacify him? To, ooh, tell Burnham to repeal the act or else. Oh my gosh. This is... I don't know. It's only May 9th. We haven't gotten that far, but we're already 40 minutes into this video. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I just want to make a lot of money as America. But it seems like, whatever we do, things could go very, very poorly. So, let me know. Should we go with sanctions are enough to pacify uh, the dude down here, uh, led by Burnham? Or do we tell Burnham to repeal the act? Let me know in the comments below. But that's going to end today's first episode, playing as the most beautiful country in the world, America, in TNO. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will decide the fate of this meeting. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.